Using a list index, you can create a single timeline animation like this and put it into a series that fires off or one after another using a property group to indicate which index value for the list should be fired. Uh, you can use that to do sort of a waving animation like this. You can also use that for a particle emitter like this one. And we're going to look at how to set that up. So we'll come over here to a new document and I've just got an artboard set up. First, I'm going to add a view model called main and I'm going to add another artboard over here and I'm going to call it part for particle and it's going to get a view model which will be called part. All right, and then I'm going to create the particle animation here. So first I'll just add an ellipse and I'll give it a color and I'm gonna group that. So now I've got the group, which I'll give a, a target so we can see it. And the ellipse itself, I'm also gonna remove the background on this one and I'm gonna set the dimensions of the artboard to zero to zero, which is gonna help the particles all align to the same spot in the parent artboard. Put the position of my particle at zero to zero to start and I will um, animate the kind of jumping of the particle here. So I'm gonna create on the timeline, I'm gonna call it jump. The X position is gonna start at zero. We're gonna have it go up to minus 500, which will bring it up above here. And then down to positive 500, which will bring it even lower from then where it started. And I meant to put that at the end. So let me redo that real quick. This one is minus 500. Okay, so now that's the sequence. We'll also add some scale to this. So we'll have it start at zero and end at zero. And at the top, that'll be 100, 100. So now it looks like that. And I'm gonna add some easing Start fast, slow down at the top, and then speed up again at the end. So we get that. All right. So um, what's going to happen with this one when we play it is that there will be a bunch of these on top of each other. Um, and then we're going to introduce some random X position movement too, so that they kind of jump out in different directions. But we'll come back to that. So here, what I'm going to do is set the very first timeline that enters into uh, zero speed, which means that it's going to come to this timeline and it'll basically come to this first key set of keys and freeze here. Uh, it won't proceed through the timeline, so all these will basically be keyed at zero, which is kind of a nice way to set a good starting point. Um, also reduces the number of keys you need to add into your animations, which is helpful for, for file size. And I'm going to add uh, two additional timelines. These are going to be at 1x speed. And these um, transitions, it's going to transition between these two when the condition is met. I also need it to transition from this frozen one uh, into the first one when the condition is met to start with as well. For the condition, I'm going to need to add some properties to my view models. So on the particle view model, I need to add this one under list attributes called index. And that's gonna be which number it is in the list. And in the main view model, I'm gonna add two numbers. One will be for the number of particles and one will be for the index trigger. And that's gonna be the index that will choose which uh, instance in the list is gonna fire. We're gonna use this number and the list index to set the conditions to fire this animation. So back here in my state machine layer, on these transitions, I will add this condition if the index trigger is equal to list index, it will fire the animation. And here, we don't really see it because uh, it needs to happen in a list. So we're gonna do that next. So over on the main artboard, I need to add the list. First, I'm gonna add a child layout and we'll remove 
that background and to the child layout, we'll add the artboard list. It's helpful to have the artboard list inside of a layout because that lets, gives you these arrangement properties, which do affect the list items. Now for the artboard list, I'm gonna add, choose the property here. And in this one, I'm gonna use a number to set up my list. And here it's turning yellow because I have to add a special converter called number to list. And on the number to list, I will choose which view model to bind it to. It will be the particle view model. And now on the artboard list, if I update my bind to include that converter, we will get that. And I believe that's all we need to do in order to get this to play, which it doesn't look like it is. Let's see, did I do something wrong? Oh, it is playing, but uh, we have this set to go into this frozen state. So that's why we don't see anything. In fact, if I come over here and remove this transition, uh, it'll just be in this state um, on this artboard. So we should see something. I'm not seeing anything though. Did I get something wrong? It's on the particle one. My list artboard is set. Oh, my, uh, here we go. My number of particles is set to zero. Let's, there's zero instances of it. I'm going to make it 20. So there are 20. So now if I play this, there we go and see it's arranged um, as the layout suggests. So I can put it in the middle and these are all in the same spot. But if I were to spread them out, you can see how many there are. And this number is going to control how many of these there are. All right, so um, what this is going to do is play from here. So I, let me go back into my uh, artboard here, reset my starting transition. So again, this is just going to start and go into that zero time frame until we meet the condition. And we need to create the condition that this is going to meet. So I'm going to add something here called a property group. Add it to the top. I'm going to add a number. And uh, let me rename it index trigger. This is going to data bind to the index trigger in my main view model, um, which is here. Um, but I'm going to set to target to source. And what the property groups allow you to do is key these values. So now in my timeline in my main artboard, I can grab this group and key it to go from 0 to 20. And this is going to play through until it gets to 20. I'm going to have this loop, so it will just keep going. Um, but you'll notice that on some of these places, it is it's just fully interpolating, and it's giving us decimal values here. I want to make sure these are whole number values so that they can actually correspond to the index numbers, which are all whole values. So I'm going to add another converter uh, under numeric called round. This one sets the decimals to zero or whichever you choose, but in this case we want zero. If I update my bind to include the round number converter, we'll still see uh, decimals here, but when it updates the main view model, those are all going to be whole numbers. And we are only going to see that when the state machine is playing. And I think since my condition is set up, this might just start playing. Yep, here we go. So. So you can see here, it's just counting zero to up to 20 and cycling through those. And as this is playing, we can do something like change the uh, gap here. And you can see this is just gonna space them out and then you can get a sense of what's happening there. They are being triggered one after another. And so if I put this back to zero, they're all gonna be in the same spot. And um, Next thing we can do is add a little randomness to the exposition. To do that, I'm going to go back into my data and I'm going to add a number under the particle view model and I'm going to call it exposition. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another group and I'll give it a small target. And this one, I'm gonna set it to 
zero, zero to start. Um, but what I'm going to do with this one, let me rename it X. And um, I'm going to bind this so that the X position is referencing the X position in the view model. But to set it random, I'm going to add a formula. So if I come down to converters, numeric, and go to formula, I can come down here to functions and pick random. And this one takes in two properties. It's kind of the minimum and maximum range of the random values. And so uh, I'm going to put in a zero comma zero to start with because that puts the properties out here for you. You can data bind these if you want, if you want to set other numbers. Um, for these, I'm just going to go uh, minus 500 and plus 500. And that's going to set basically a 1000 range uh, for where that can go. And if I come over here into um, my um, state machine and play this, and I'm going to turn on, uh, turn off show final playback. You should, oh, I need to add that converter. So let me add, update the bind, let me add the, it's the formula, I should rename these. Um, so now when I play this, you'll see that that smaller target is going to jump to a random spot within that plus 500 and minus 100 range. And so I want my particle to follow uh, that. So I'm going to add um, on the particle group, I'm going to add a translation constraint. I'm going to target the X random group. And I'm going to make sure that it only follows it in the X position, not the Y. And on my jump timeline, I am going to key the strength of that uh, constraint. So I want it to start at zero. And at the end of my timeline, I want it to be at 100. So it should move over to follow that converter. And so each instance of the uh, list should create its own random value. So these should, yeah, start jumping off in random directions. And each time you start this, it should start in different places. So there you go, that's how you can add some randomness to it and have your state machine play through index values to trigger list animations.